Tiberio. Tiberio, are you all right? Marco. What happened? Marco, did you, did you see them? Who? The men who did this. The two men did pass me just now, but I didn't see their faces. Oh, it'll be weeks, weeks before I can start printing again. Tiberio, apart from our friends, does anyone else know that you were printing the Republican Manifesto? Well, what about the copies? Crispino, my son, took them to the author an hour ago. Perhaps they've caught Crispino with the manifestos, and then they're going to take... Father, what's happened? Oh, you're safe, Crispino. That's all that matters. Who did this, Father? Oh, I wish I knew. Crispino, did anyone stop you just now? No. Brunetto and Angelo came with me for protection. Oh? Why did you think it was necessary to have protection? Things like this have been happening all the time. Last week it was Pietro's father. Well, his shop was set on fire. There's no doubt in my mind, Marco. This is a systematic campaign against Republican sympathizers. Well, it's got to be stopped. Otherwise, there won't be a Republican movement left in Florence. And de Medici will have everything his own way. Mm. If it is de Medici's work, where does he get his information? You boys don't talk about the work that your fathers do for the Republic, do you? Not to the aristocrats. <laughs> what do you mean? He means at school. Why, Crispino and his friends are taught under the same roof as the sons of half the princely houses in Florence. And do the other boys that you mentioned go to this school too? Yes, of course. It's an honor. Why, why only the cleverest boys in Florence are admitted. Well, it seems that the one thing in common that all these attacks have is that they were made on the fathers of boys who go to this school. Master Marco, do you think that someone at the school is a Medici spy? <laughs> I don't know. But we'd better find out before any more Republicans lose their businesses. Now, your school has an art teacher, of course. Well, there was one until about a year ago. What? Well, I think you're going to have a new one. Who? Myself. Then you can do something for me. What? Well, if we do find there's anybody in the school spying for de Medici, we've got to make him feel sorry for it. I've spoken to Crispino about this, and I want you to promise too. Promise what? Promise to treat him in the way Crispino's father was treated, and the others, no matter who it is. Be expelled. What's that matter? It's better to teach the traitor a lesson. Might be my father's attack next, or yours. What are you two whispering about? Nothing to do with you, Tizio. Oh. If you've something to hide, you shouldn't stand about looking like conspirators. Oh, hello, Master Del Monte. Welcome to the Academy. Thank you, boys. Perhaps you'll help me find the headmaster. Oh, yes, he, he's usually in his study about this time. Uh, it's by the second archway there. Thank you. Who is your friend? Master Del Monte, the artist. What's he doing here? I don't know. Hmm. This used to be the most exclusive school in Florence. Now it seems anyone could just walk in. never could trust Tizio or any other boy whose father is a duke or a prince or something. They'd do anything to please de Medici. It is very gratifying to find a young man of your talent prepared to work for such a modest reward. I suggest we seal the appointment. Now, you must understand how our system of education works. The boys from the princely families have to pay for their schooling. The poorer boys are admitted free. The only requirement being an intelligence above the average. Owing to the patronage of His Excellency de Medici, I have been able to admit more poor students than would otherwise have been possible. Oh, then de Medici takes an active interest in this school. Oh, occasionally he honors us with a visit. But does he talk with the pupils? Yes, usually about their work. And I suppose that he shows an equal interest in the poor students. Uh, there's no favoritism. Oh, His Excellency is impartial, as am I. I try to impress upon the boys, that here only the quality of their work will gain the respect, not the nobility of their families. Now, I have to take a class, sir. Perhaps you'd care to come with me. It'll give you an opportunity to get to know the boys. Oh, indeed, I would. In fact, there's nothing uh, that I'd like better. When a democratic city, a thirst for liberty, gets bad, bad... Remember, Tizio, that Plato is a man of logic. He is writing about a city thirsting for liberty. Thirsting, Tizio. 
What is the next word? What is the next word, Angelo? Cupbearers. When a democratic city, a thirst for liberty, gets bad cupbearers for its leaders, <laughs> like Florence. <laughs> that sounds treasonous. I, I didn't mean that. And what does the son of a tradesman know about politics anywhere? My father knows a lot about politics, and he says Florence has bad leaders. I'm sure your father would never speak like that about the council. He didn't mean the council. He meant de Medici. That is enough. <laughs> Angelo, what made you speak like that? Tizio makes me lose my temper. Maybe he does it deliberately, so that he's something to tell de Medici. Do you think it's Tizio who's the spy? Could be anyone. Master Del Monte, do you think what I said in the classroom could make trouble for my father? Well, I hope not, Angelo. But I think you should be more careful. Yes, I will. Angelo, who is your father? Federigo Gonzago. <laughs> Federico Gonzago? Yes, yes, what can I do? <laughs> Sorry. Again. Shoulder. Flank. Head. Chest. Well, that wasn't very good, was it? Master Marco. Do you have a moment? Uh, Brunetto and I have worked out a new stroke. We'd like to show it to you. Yes, well, I'd like to see it. Come on. All right. Shoulder. Flank. Head. Chest. Hmm. Yes, you were a little overbalanced there. You see, if you were parried or missed, you'd be dead before you could recover. Look, I'll show you. All right, Brunetto, let's do the same exercise again. Uh, you start. Aha. Good. Excellent. Now, you see, you must always be able to recover. You should move in any direction you want, but always be able to keep your balance. Well, I wouldn't like to pick a fight with you, Master Marco. That was marvelous. Well, it's all a question of practice. Master Marco! Master Marco! Master Marco! I must speak to you. What is it, Angelo? My father. He's been attacked. No. When did it happen? did it? What happened? My father's shop was burnt down last night. I've just heard. It's my fault. I know it's my fault. Then someone did tell de Medici what you said in class. Why should his magnificence take any interest in Angelo's father? You people want to make him responsible for everything. And I don't mind admitting I admire de Medici. He's intelligent and cultured and a patron of the arts. And if it weren't for the fact that he's a patron of this school, you wouldn't be here at all. You're the one. You're the traitor. That's enough, Angelo. That won't solve anything. You'd better leave and get control of yourself. What an ill-bred young man. You wish to speak to me, Tizio? Yes, sir. Master Teofilo told me to tell you de Medici is here to visit the school. If that's so, maybe I'd better find Angelo and tell him. Yes, Brunetto. Well, Crispino, we'd better tidy up for the inspection. Yes, sir. For a moment, my dear Brunetto, I was hard put to recognize you, which only goes to prove that your appearance used to be memorable, even if your face was not. I can only hope that the quality of the teaching here is better than that of your clothes. I cannot imagine why you don't come to school attired in a manner more in keeping with your position. Surely you don't learn any more by coming here dressed as though you were some tradesman's son. Well, the boys trust me more if I look like one of them. I don't trust people like Tizio. <laughs> Extraordinary. And your mother was always so punctilious in such matters. Well, be that as it may, tell me something about your friends here. Ah, Del Monte. I had heard about your appointment. Splendid. Splendid. Although I must say I was, uh, I was surprised. I always thought that you burned with such a, such a creative fire that, uh, you would have no time to spare to teach others. The flame has to be passed on, Your Magnificence. Mm, you have my sympathies. Class dismissed. You 
wanted to see me, Angela? Well, can I help you? Master Marco, I know who the traitor is. Do you think de is trying to find out something? What you mean about his enemies? Yes. Maybe he's here to see his spy. Oh, he's probably just here to see the school. Renato, I want to see you at once. Come in and close the door, please. Yes, sir? Angelo has just told me something which I think you should hear. I was in the corridor when you were talking to De Medici. Oh, I, I was looking for you and, and he stopped me. De Medici said, why did you have to dress like a guildsman's son? Why didn't you wear clothes more in keeping with your position? Did he say that, Brunetto? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't remember what he said. You said we trusted you more if you dressed like a poor boy. Well, maybe I did. There's, there's nothing wrong in that. Why do you never talk about your parents? What are you trying to hide? Because I don't like to, that's all. What's this about? What have I done wrong? You talk to your friend, De Medici. You're the traitor. Oh, that's a lie. You know it's a lie, Angelo. You're my friend. I'm no friend of any traitor. All right, Angelo, that's enough. You may go. We'll be waiting for you. It's not true. Is your friend Angelo a liar, then? No, no, of course not. I, I did talk to De Medici, but I never said anything about the boy's fathers. Where are you going? I'm late for my next class. I think, Brunetto, for your own safety, it would be better if you stayed here. I'm not afraid of them. Doesn't seem possible. No. Well, you wait till you hear what de Medici said to him. He said, tell me something about your friends. What are we going to do? Well, I know what I'm going to do. Thanks to you, my father lost his shop. Now I'm going to show you what we think of spies. We all will. No, this is between me and Brunetto. I don't want to fight you, Angelo. So you're a coward as well as a spy, like your friends the Medici. Come on, fight! You're a coward! Coward? I don't want to fight you, Angelo. Maybe this will make you change your mind. Let him go. We don't want him here anyway. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Now, what should we start with today? Oh, where's Brunetto? Well, he's gone. He's not coming back. Well, how do you know that? We let him know he wasn't wanted here. That seems to me to be rather a harsh punishment for the crime of speaking to His Magnificence. You know that I shall have to report this to Master Teofio? Yes, sir. If Brunetto has been harmed in any way, then all concerned will be punished. Is that quite clear? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, may I take Brunetto's place? Yes, if you think it will improve your answers. Master Marco, will you still teach us art? Yes. Why not, Crespino? I don't know. I was just wondering. Sir. There's something here I think you should see. It's a list of the class. And there's a mark against the names of Crespino, Felici, Antonio, and Angelo. These are boys whose fathers were attacked. You found this in Brunetto's place? Yes, sir. Brunetto better not show his face here again. Oh, the, the door was open. Uh, I came to see Master Marco. 
Oh, you poor boy. Come on. Look, sit down. Sit down. Let me bathe this for you. Are you one of the pupils from the school? Not anymore. No? Why not? Well, they asked me to leave. They don't seem to have asked you very politely. Well, everyone thinks I'm a, a Medici spy. Oh. And are you? No. Does Marco believe you? No. Marco would never accuse anyone without proof. Well, it was my own fault. I, I was concealing something, but well, now I've come to tell him the truth. I'll be glad to hear it, Brunetto. But why is it that you couldn't tell the truth before? Well, because I, I thought I could stay on at the school until you found the real traitor. Then I wouldn't have to tell anyone the secret. But it doesn't matter anymore. And what is this secret? My mother is de' Medici's cousin. Oh. So your loyalty is naturally to your family and not to your school friends. Oh, that's what everyone would think. But I don't want to have anything to do with the Medici. I was accepted in the school on merit, not influence. I thought I could keep it a secret that I was related to the Medici. I think he's a tyrant. And you say that you know nothing about these attacks on Republicans? No, nothing. I wish I could believe you. Well, I believe him. Angelica, you don't know what this is about. Marco, I've got as much intuition as the next woman. And I know he's speaking the truth. You don't think so, Master Marco? This was found in your desk. <laughs> but this isn't mine. I don't write like this. For heaven's sake, boy, you're only making things worse for yourself. You know what's on that list as well as I do. Yes, yes, I know, but this is not my handwriting. Then whose is it? I don't know. So you're asking me to believe that one of the other boys put it by your chair? Of course. Why not? There is the small matter of proof. If I'd stayed on at the school, I might have found some proof. Brunetto, you cannot fight the whole class. No. I mean to prove my innocence somehow, sir. Thank you for believing me, signorina. Oh, anyone would think I didn't want to believe the boy. But if he didn't write this list, then I wish I knew who did. Can you tell me why there's so much unrest among the pupils? In the past two weeks, the, the work has been deteriorating alarmingly. Yes, Master Theophilo, I can. Is there anything to do with the boy who left, uh, Brunetto? Well, the other pupils think that he was spying on them. What is that to spy on here? Well, some of the boy's fathers are enemies of de' Medici, and information has been getting to him about them. Ah, Brunetto is related to de' Medici. He would, of course, be the one suspected. Then you knew about it? Naturally. Well, it's not quite that natural. Brunetto made a point of concealing his family background from the others. But is there any real evidence against the boy? Well, after he left, this was found in his desk. It seemed to be the final proof of his guilt, but yesterday he came to my studio and he denied writing it. Well, he would obviously do that, wouldn't he? Well, he must have known that I could compare this list with examples of his writing here in the school. I wonder... Might I have a look at the last examination papers? But of course. I don't like also to see the writing of the other boys. Yeah, they're all in here. I think they're all there. I'll get you somebody to refresh you while we work. Thank you. Are these all the papers? Find no resemblance then. Well, I'd like you to see this. Mm -hmm. Now here's Brunetto's writing. You see, they're, they're quite different. Yes, they are. Was something in one of them that reminded me of oh, your drink? <laughs> I'll have another look through them. Well, here's to a successful search. 
Perhaps when all this is over, we'll be able to get the boys' minds back on schoolwork. There was something in the margin. Ah, here it is. Now, look at these. Look at the similarity. Yes. Master Theophilo, this is a correction. Yes, it is, isn't it? This handwriting is yours. There's no doubt about it. Then you put this list in Brunetto's desk yourself. I'd hardly put it in my own. I had to find some way of diverting your attention. I suppose you know what will happen to you when news of this reaches the men who are attacked. But it won't reach them. You think you can stop me from leaving here? I've already stopped you. Your drink is poisoned. Master Theophilo, there's still time to see that you do no more harm. <laughs> Let the poison do its work, or would you prefer a quicker death? <laughs> Marco! I'm so glad I got to hear in time, Oh, Renato, I'm afraid I... I'm dying. But at least I'll have made sure that Master Teofilo will have done no more informing. But the, the wound's only slight. The wound? There's nothing, boy. Nothing. But you see, the wine I drank was... was poisoned. It's curious. I... I don't feel dizzy or... or faint or... But of course not, Master Del Monte. Oh, Renato, I'm sorry that I suspected you. I'm sure now that, that everything will be all right. Master Del Monte, oh, you'll be all... Brunetto, the things that I could have done if I'd lived. In a few short years, the name of Marco Del Monte would have reached the far corners of the earth. But you have a few more years. I switched the goblets. Thank you. Thank you, Brunetto. Oh, Florence will have lost a great painter, Brunetto. Already she... What did you say? I came to see you, and I was behind the tapestry when Master Teofilo put something in one of the drinks. So, uh, when he called you over to examine my paper, I switched the drinks. You mean, there's no poison in the drink? Not in yours. You might have said so before. If you switch the goblets, then... Ah. Marco. Yes, I'll get you a physician. But if he saves your life, you'll still have to answer to the men whom you've betrayed. Well, don't just stand there, boy. You've got a lot of work to make up. <laughs> <laughs>